doing? It is time for the finale of Wrapped Up Retro. We've done 10 episodes, or this will be episode 10, which is always where I leave it. And I'm, I've been begging up this finale for a while because I'm really damn as well. I feel so sick. Sing us I've a got song. a migraine. I've got a headache. So this is something we did for the first time last year with last year's Wrapped Up. And what it is, is I can't stop reading until I find a five star wrapped up edition so i don't have any choice what the books are we have to unwrap them and then read them and we can't stop unwrapping them until we find a five star last year we had a fluke and i got a five star in one book i that won't be happening this year that won't be happening this year <laughs> that won't be happening this year because these are if you remember the oldest books on my tbr and i just feel like if i haven't read them by now the chance of them being a five star is fairly slim. We had a five star in last month's episode and I said I wish I hadn't unwrapped it then and we'd saved it for this episode because um, yeah, I don't have the highest, the highest hope. <laughs> I'm gonna say that now. So shall we just unwrap our first book? Probably of many. <laughs> see what it is. I'm drawn. I like to have a little look and just see what catches my eye. This one is catching my eye. And this book is catching my eye. Should we do Ip Dip Doo? Okay. Ip Dip Doo, the cat got the poo, the dog got the chicken pox, so out goes you. Okay, so it's this one. Let's see what it is, shall we? Oh. <laughs> right. Can you see what it is? Okay. Why are we getting like the heavy, 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 heavy books? <laughs> wrapped up retro oh my good both this book which i literally just finished last month's book i always film these and i take last month's thumbnail was very heavy and this one's very 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 heavy and actually this could be five stars this could be five stars it could be it's not that bad dispatches from rape culture edited by roxane gay so it's all essays that address what it means to live in a world where women have to measure the harassment violence and aggression they face and where they are routinely second guessed blown off discredited denigrated besmirched belittled patronized mocked shamed gaslit insulted and bullied for speaking out yeah i've always heard many good things about this one this could be a five star it's non-fiction which is great and yeah one that i've always meant to get to and heard wonderful things about this could be a five star we could, imagine if we get a five star again. I, I do want some stakes to this. Like I do want, you know, <laughs> maybe two books or three. Just, this is the likelihood of me getting one of these. Oh, I almost wish I hadn't unwrapped this. Who knows? It might not be a five star because it's a collection of essays and anthology stuff doesn't always do the best for me. But we shall see. So we're going to read this. I'll check in with you when I'm a little bit of the way through it. But yeah, I'm, you know, not looking forward to isn't the right word, but I think this is going to be incredibly important. Hello friends. I, if you asked me at the start of this week when I was starting this book, I thought this was going to be a one book vlog again, like it was for the last season finale of Wrapped Up, where I read, the first book I read was five stars. I thought this is really going to be a five star. I currently don't think it's going to be, and it's, l let me just say, it is an incredibly important book. So if you don't know, this is basically a series of essays about rape culture. Some authors have been sexually assault themselves. Some are talking more with their experience of the way that like w the perception of women or the perception of femme people and like what's expected of them in certain workplaces or what have you. So there's a mix, there's a mix of this. And I think for me really the main reason that it's not a five star is that is, is because it's an anthology, right? I think anthologies are really, really hard to give five stars, especially when they're like a mix of writing styles. I think I gave um, whichever Carmen Maria Machado I read, <laughs> so I always mix them up. Did I read? I read Her Bodies and Other Parties. I think I gave that five star because it's one author, right? But I just think with the difference in writing styles, can you ever, I mean, a lot of people have given this five stars, but for me personally, when writing style is so at the forefront of my rating, and like whether I resonate with a writing style, whether I connect, I don't know whether you can ever give it five stars because like, I feel like I'm kind of being jolted between writing styles and just as I've gotten used to one, I get like thrown into another one. Or you're gonna have some that you prefer, some kind of essays you prefer than others and you kind of want a bit more of and then you're like into one you're not as interested in. So, um, so yeah, I, I do think that, that I'm probably not gonna give it a five star because of that. And I guess I was going into this with the expectation that it was gonna be five star. <laughs> That's really what I thought going into this vlog and it doesn't look like that. So it looks like we're gonna be, it's least a bit more exciting for the vlog rather than just like reading one book again and it's five stars. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> 
I will also say, I think, you know, this came out in 2018, which is like six years ago. And I think although there's still so much work to be done, I think the public consciousness on this has has made progress. And I think perhaps there's things being said in this that felt even more revolutionary or even more saying the quiet part out loud or saying the thing everyone was too afraid to say or, you know, bringing new thoughts to the table in 2018 that are now more accepted. So it doesn't feel as like, whoa, you know, I, it feels like these are kind of, um, I've heard similar stories before and that's not saying these shouldn't be told, you know, people are telling such important, important personal stories in this that I think it's it really, this is like an integral book for everyone to read. But I just don't know if I'm gonna give it five stars because of that, you know? I haven't had an essay either yet that's really like took my breath away. And I don't know if there's a part of me that like, I'm still, I'm, I feel like at the moment I'm a bit emotionally like guarded. <laughs> personally because like life has been a bit rough and so I don't know if there's a part of me that's like keeping a guard up to some of the really difficult stuff that's saying that's being said in this and not like fully giving myself over emotion I don't have to describe it it's not like I'm like oh I don't want to hear that you know but I don't know if I'm absorbing myself into these stories in the way that they fully deserve, if that makes any kind of sense. So I'm, I don't say I'm enjoying it. I think this is an incredibly important book. I think the stories that we're hearing, the people's bravery and rawness is absolutely, you know, astounding. But I haven't, you know, when I read Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, very different topic, but like there were moments I was like, oh, just the way you've put that in words is incredible. I haven't had moments where I've been like, my breath has been taken away by the way a short, a short story has been written. You know, I think all of them are important, but I'm not like, whoa, that's like one of the best essays I've ever read, you know? So uh, yeah, I'm finding it very, very you know, interesting and important, but I don't, I'm not getting the five star, five star feeling right now. If you guys have watched my videos lately, you know, there's been a lot of books lately. We have a lot more. Well, no, we have like, I think five parcels to open. So I know it's a bit of a tonal shift from talking about this, but I've been saving them up from, because they didn't really fit doing it in my Goodreads vlog that I just posted because like that video is so packed with reading anyway. So I think it makes, I mean, this video could be packed with reading. We don't know how many books we're gonna read yet. But um, I figured I would go open those now so I can thank everyone who sent them to me. So let's go see what books I have been sent. Okie dokie friends, let me get the pile. Here's everything we're gonna be doing <laughs> unboxing up. You guys, please, no one sent me anything for a while. I'm so appreciative. Everyone who sent me something but um like donate to a cat charity or something <laughs> okay first but oh this has sprayed edges like lime green <gasps> who is this from this is from carmen coggan hi meg thank you for the content you create i listened to this a while back i'm surprised by how much i enjoyed it hopefully you do too oh ps just use your code to order a light thanks again oh my goodness that's so exciting <laughs> Oh, I love my light. Anyways, Carmen has gifted me one. I love the spray edge of this. Um, Arch Conspirator by Veronica Roth. This is one of Veronica Roth's short stories. I read Poster Girl by Veronica Roth and was like kind of obsessed. I never read Divert. Veronica Roth is Divergent, right? Yeah. I never read Divergent. It wasn't Divergent Gurdy, but I think what she's been doing since that is really interesting. I also really loved the Ark short story she had in the summer collection, Amazon. Outside the last city on Earth, the planet is a wasteland. Without the archive where the genes of the dead are stored, humanity will end. Uh, Antagony's parents are dead. Passing into the archive should be a cause of celebration, but with her militant uncle, Creon, rising to claim her father's vacant throne, all Antagony feels is rage. Oh, interesting. So is this a retelling? How interesting. But yeah, I've loved everything I've read from Veronica Roth that she's been publishing lately. So thank you so much. Okay, next one. I also don't know, these, some of these have been here a while. I've been waiting for the right moment to unbox them with you. So I don't know. Oh. Ooh, who is this from? From Lisa. I'm so sorry for the loss of your sweet kitty. It's so heartbreaking. I hope this book will bring a smile to your face. I haven't read it yet, but I hope you enjoy it. We've got Bury Your Gaze by Chuck Tingle. I've never read anything by Chuck Tingle. I know he does those like crazy, wacky books usually. It's like married to a, or like, I don't know what, I, I, I can't even do a Chuck Tingle title justice. But this is one of his more like mainstream published books. And Misha is almost here for an Oscar nomination and the executives at the studio for his long running streaming series know just the thing to kick his career to the next level. Kill off the gay characters for the algorithm. It sounds funny, it sounds ridiculous, it sounds like it's holding a mirror up to society. So thank you, so I'm so excited for this one. I'm very excited to try out Chuck Tingle. And I love the cover, it's such a vibe. I love, 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 love the cover. Okay, next one. 
bloody hell. Right, let me not look what the books are and see if there's a note. There is a note. There is notes. These are from, oh, Koros Books. From my friends at Koros Books. Something to cheer me up. Thank you, Koros Books. My goodness. So they've sent one from my wish list, which is 14 Days, which is an anthology by all these different authors. It's a collaborative novel um, set during lockdown, I think, at this house. But it's an irresistibly propulsive novel with an unusual twist. Each character in this diverse, eccentric cast of neighbours has been secretly written by a different author. So I think they've... How does that even work? Do they have different parts? To me, it looks like they have different, like in a chapter, there's different parts and they're all writing different. How does that work? Are they all writing a different chapter? Make it make sense, like explain no, listen. it. No, it looks to me like each part opens up with like a different, this is fascinating, a different character. How interesting. And then um, they said, thought you might enjoy this mystery from Coros Books. Related by murder. I've never heard of this. Writing murder mysteries by day, Elise Edwards exists in a cocoon of routine designed to protect her from the outside world. When her brother is murdered, her dismal life is shattered and she's forced to confront her past, her brother and herself. Working with her nemesis by night to investigate his murder, she uncovers shocking secrets, including her nemesis's lack of alibi. Fascinating. This sounds like exactly my kind of thing. So thank you for putting it on my radar. Okay, we've got three parcels left, I think. <laughs> Next one. <gasps> We've got a graphic novel. Who got me a graphic novel? No way, no way, no way. From Jenna. Okay, this is book two of two, so there's something else coming. <laughs> Hope you enjoy this cozy wee graphic novel and it brings you some com comfort during this heartbreaking time. We have got one I've wanted for so long. We've got moon cakes. <gasps> is my love language oh my to receive gifts? <laughs> <laughs> I need more graphic novels. I have no graphic novels on my TBR. <gasps> This is so exciting, thank you. It's a teen witch and a werewolf and they're baking. Absolutely, that sounds like exactly my kind of thing. Also, Tom has just started hoovering outside, if you can hear him, but we're about to go swimming, so I, I can't wait for him to be finished. <laughs> and then let's see, oh my goodness, what is this? Jenna got me another graphic novel. Jenna got me another graphic novel. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. It is the start of a new series though. Sorry, that's fine. Oh my God. We have got Law Olympus Volume 1, which is like a Greek mythology inspired graphic novel, but I think it's quite humorous. Whoa, the smell from that is extremely strong. <laughs> my goodness. Hmm, I kind of like the smell. Oh, that is so exciting. Jenna, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wow. I feel so lucky. I love a good new graphic novel. <laughs> and then the last book is one I've been sent by a publisher. I have requested a few things. I don't know if it's something I've requested or if it's something else. But let's see, shall we? I don't know what this is going to be. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. We have got, this sounds so incredible, guys. The Final Act of Juliet Willoughby by Ellery Lloyd. This is a... Paris 1938, runaway heiress Juliet Willoughby perishes with her married lover in an accidental studio fire alongside her surrealist masterpiece. In Cambridge in 1991, two art students stumble across proof that something sinister was at play in her death, and now an art dealer is accused of the brutal murder of his oldest friend, the last surviving member of the Willoughby dynasty. <gasps> That sounds so good. <laughs> sounds so good. It reminds me like it's giving me Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo vibes, but murder mystery. Absolutely, absolutely. Give it to me now! I think it sounds really, really amazing. So, thank you for all those books. I am gonna go make progress not that bad. Well, we're gonna go for a swim. So next time I see you, I may be a bit disheveled because I reckon I'm gonna try and finish not that bad today. We'll see how it goes. But I'm gonna try my best. So I'll see you later once I've finished it. But at the moment, it's feeling like a very, very strong four star, you know? So we'll see how it goes. Okay, friends, here's the sitch. Let's first talk about a few things. Firstly, apologies if you can hear my computer over there, it sounds like it's taking off because I'm currently on reading sprints and <laughs> my computer can't deal with that. Secondly, if my face looks strange, I have a wisdom tooth perfection from hell, from hell. I am being referred to have it taken out. The one on this side, oh my God. It's so painful. It's one of the worst wisdom tooth infections I've ever had. I'm going to the dentist in T minus two hours. I just checked my watch. Dum dum. I do have a uh, tan line for my Apple Watch, but I'm not wearing it right now. So there are the two points of action. I have finished Not That Bad by Roxanne Gay, and I'm going to give this a 4.5 star. 
which I think is actually certifiably insane when I'm doing a video that's like can't stop reading until I find a five star. Like I might not find anything that's as good as this. <laughs> I may struggle to find anything on a similar level to this, you know? It might be hard out here for me to find something on a similar level to like this. She's absolutely insane. Should you sit at home thinking maybe just give it five stars, but I can't. That'd be a lie. Cause it's probably even more like 4.25. I don't do quarter ratings before getting into quarter ratings. It's more of a point, 4.25. There was a section in this, in the second half, including I said yes, not that loud, why I stopped, picture perfect, and maybe the one after that, to get out from under it, which were all five stars. Something just clicked for me, and I think they are all, there's one in the middle I didn't read out that's like, wasn't a five star, but like that run, absolutely insane like those were so well written so beautifully written something about the writing side just really engaged with i think it says something about the way this has been edited by roxanne gay that i felt like those stories really flowed well into one another and yeah that was like beyond five star for me that section but i'd say a lot of the other stories are like strong four stars to me where you know i mean this feels like i feel i, I find this book difficult to talk about which, I'm, which is one of the reasons i'm glad that this vlog isn't just this book because you know, I'm trying to like critique my enjoyment of it when like, how could I, you know, the people are pouring out the the hardest, most deepest pain really onto the page. And I'm like, oh, I didn't like, you know, but just in terms of what resonated with me, that section was for me, you know, inc absolutely incredible in terms of the writing, in terms of what it made you feel. Yeah, I just think, you know, again, I'm not talking about really the substance of what this is saying because, I think it's almost impossible to talk about. Uh, one thing, a thought I did have that I guess I'll share with you. I mean, I had a lot of thoughts, but one thought um, I did have that really just depressed me is like in so many of these stories, it's fathers, right? It's either like a, a writer's father or the friend, uh, you know, the father of a friend, and it's just like Jesus Christ, like fucking hell, like it's just so sad. It's just so depressing at the world we live in, and it makes me scared to have children and like, you know send them around people's houses. But like, I'm also thinking in that moment, like my parents never exposed me to that fear, right? And oh, it's just like, how do we live in this world when there's, there's monstrous, people doing monstrous things like that, you know? Anyways, but I don't wanna get into too much in substance because I don't want it to be triggering for people watching and I don't wanna, you know, overstep. But I think this is like integral, integral, integral reading for people. I just think an anthology is hard to give five stars because there's certain, writers that you gel with more you know that you vibe with more that you engage with more that grab you more but um i you know i thought a lot of these were incredibly well written and so brave i mean i just don't know i don't know if i if i had experienced stuff that a lot of people in this had experienced if i would be brave enough to write that you know that the uh, yeah i just think it's integral reading for everyone but it's not a five star <laughs> I may come to regret that. I should have just lied, maybe. So let me go get uh, all my books, all wrapped up books, and let's pick another one. Uh, I'm a bit scared. I don't think I don't think it's gonna be easy to find a five star out of this cohort. Okay, here we are. Here I am. Here we are. Yes, another week. I feel. I don't feel hope. I feel dread. <laughs> what should we unwrap? What shall we unwrap? I'm drawn to either, oh, I don't know if I like the feel of that one. This one or this one, just by looking. I just look and I see what I want to grab. <laughs> I'm gonna go, guys, this is so horrible. Do I want one of these? <laughs> I just feel like, you know, these are old ass books on my TBR at this point. These have been around the block, you know? I've had mostly, I've had all of these from, 2021 or prior a lot of them are 2020 purchases um okay let's do this one let's do this one let's do this one i don't feel good about it i don't feel good about it one bit 
Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. I think at the very least this will be a quick read. I don't know how interesting this one will be for many of you guys. Let me let me bring you in. So we have unwrapped Pages and Co. Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. This is the second in the Pages and Co. series. This is a middle grade fantasy series where a girl like goes travels into the books that she wants to read and works at her parents, her grandparents, grandparents bookstore. The back says Tilly Pages is a book wanderer. She can travel inside books and even talk to the characters she meets there. But when fairy tales start leaking book magic and causing havoc Tilly's powers are put to the test I don't feel like this is gonna be a five star because I gave the first one I think a four in 2020 <laughs> it's been a while I am gonna be making series progress with this at least but and it should be a quick read but I don't know if it's gonna be a five star I don't think I'd predict this to be a five star if I'm honest with you but who knows Pages and Covers I think Anna James's debut so the writing may have improved and I do like fairy tales I do like kind of whimsy the only problem with this is i feel like i'm not gonna remember what's a spoiler from the first book but like it's a middle grade i'm gonna try my best not to spoil but if i accidentally spoil like is the fact that she's a book wanderer a spoiler i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so anyways that's what we're reading next at least i'll make series progress it is quite long though it's like 400 pages but it's middle grade so it should read pretty fast so i'll check in with you when i'm halfway through this don't know if i think this is gonna be a five star if i'm honest with you I wouldn't predict it to be so, but we could be pleasantly surprised. So let's, let's see. I am very quickly halfway through uh, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales. I was like, what do I call it? I always want to call it Pages and Co. Because you call the first one Pages and Co, but then it's not. It's Tilly, this one's Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales. The series is Pages and Co. Anyways, anyways, I'm halfway through very quickly. Sped through it, you know. <laughs> you only read half a book you're like Jesus Christ that was so quick it's because it's middle grade and I literally read all that via the audiobook um it's fine it's fine <laughs> I don't really have anything to say in this one uh Tilly and her friend Oscar have gone to Paris and they've just got there and they're book wandering and it's all cute and fun I'm debating whether I'm going to continue with this series I I'm in a complete state of shock I forgot what I was going to say <laughs> I don't think it's bad. I think it's probably wonderful. I'm just debating how much middle grade I really want to read anymore. And it's funny, I think I gave the first in Claire's Mysteries a lower rating than I gave the first in this series. However, there's something about seeing how a mystery is done for middle grade that intrigues me, that like, it excites me, you know? And when I read the first Sinclair's Mysteries, I was barely into mysteries as a genre, right? So I think that's what shifted it. Whereas like, this just feels to me like kind of generic middle grade. And when I think of the middle grade, I really wanna read. I really wanna continue Amari and the Great Game series, Amari and the Night Brothers. And I'm debating whether I wanna continue A Pinch of Magic, which is the other, this, the Sinclair's Mysteries and A Pinch of Magic were the three series I read in that middle grade video. And I'm just kind of like, do I care? Do I care? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's also because it's been so long since I read the first one. It's been four years, <laughs> you know? So I I remember what happened. I don't know. By the end, I might be like, okay, that was really cute. I want to continue. It is kind of a love letter to writing and books and fairy tales. And I enjoy that aspect of it. But I've just kind of read that first half and I was like, Ugh, you know, I think there's certain middle grade out there that's perfect for children. And there's some middle grade out there that like you can read as an adult and enjoy. There's some that like the writing style is very childlike and then there's some where it's more adult like but kids enjoy it. Like you know we hate the woman, we hate the woman but I think we can all agree that the Harry Potter series, I hate using this as an example but it's the one thing that's in my mind so bear with but like I'm not you know we hate the woman. But the Harry Potter series is something that adults enjoy reading you know but it's for children whereas I obviously adults enjoy reading this because everyone on freaking Goodreads is probably adults reading this, although it's marketed as children. But I just feel like it's really written for children and it's not for us to read. I'm like reading this, I'm like, this isn't fair. This isn't fair for me to review because I just don't feel like I'm the target audience, you know? So it's, it's cute, it's fine, but like, you know, <laughs> it's kind of how I'm feeling. <laughs> So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and read the second half, but I do not think this is gonna be five star. So we are gonna be reading something else, but I'll check with you once I've finished it. Um, it's cute, it's cute, but I don't necessarily feel like, if I'm reading something like this, it's like a love letter to books and stuff. I want it to feel like a fairy, I wanna feel like I'm in a fairy tale. And we literally are in fairy tales in the books I'm reading, but I don't necessarily feel like it. I don't know. I'll check in you once I've finished it with thoughts on whether I'm gonna continue the series. So this is a three star. 
It's a three star. Oh my God, it's so echo in here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm around Tom's. Um, this is a three star. My biggest problem with this is that this doesn't feel like a complete story. There's six books in this series. I think we could have cut that down a bit. Like when I'm looking at the synopsis of the third book, it feels like that's the second half of what this book is setting up. And I just like my books to be like, self-contained narratives like maybe that's the kind of uh, you know murder mystery lover in me where like you get an issue and we solve it by the end of the book like i don't really like yes i like little cliffhangers or little issues to tie series together but i really love a self-contained story and this just isn't that i mean maybe i feel like this is more answering questions and tying up loose ends from the first book than it is answering the questions that it sets up in the second book if that makes sense and i just don't know if that's how i like my books and maybe i'd feel that was more impactful if i hadn't read the first book four years ago <laughs> But I mean, it does set up, you know, everything that happened because it's a kid's book. So it like recaps everything. But, um, you know, I think I maybe felt, I felt I wasn't very interested in the resolution to those things because I read them so long ago. So, you know, it's a three star. Meh. Mm. That's really the biggest issue with it. I have decided I'm not continuing with the series. So we have made series progress with this. And then I have DNF the series because there's six of them. As if there was four, maybe I'd push through, but there's six. And that just feels like a lot, you know? That just feels like a lot. So there is one less series on my currently reading, which is good. Yeah, I don't really have many thoughts. It was fine. I think it reads very, very young. I think I prefer middle grade. Like middle grade is such a wide term because there's a lot of books that fall into that. Like I would say my the middle grade I often prefer is either like, young young where it feels like nostalgic or you know you can kind of imagine reading it to your kids or like a Mari and the Night Brothers level where it's a little bit older it's not YA but it's like for older children readers um and I just felt like the dialogue in there I don't like when I feel like a kid's book is is the author's trying to figure out, I want to say this, how do I dumb it down for kids? Rather than it being, I don't know how to put this, <laughs> rather than it being like what they would say or how they would think. Like I feel like it's taking adult concepts and dumbing down the language to like its lowest level. And I don't like that in kids books. I don't want my kids books to feel dumbed down. Not that this entirely, but sometimes the dialogue, just little bits of the dialogue would rub me up the wrong way. So yeah, we're, we're doing after series that I've been reading for four years. <laughs> but I feel like that's good. We need to get some of those series off the list. You know, either, this is why I want to read the second book in a lot of them, where I've only read the first book, because some of them I probably, if I read the second book, will just be like, okay, I'm done, you know? Whereas I can't do that now. None of them on the list where I, do I feel comfortable DNFing now, but if I read the second book, maybe I would. So I knew I was coming around Tom's for a couple days and I knew this was not going to be a five star. So I have already unwrapped our next book. So I'll cut to Megan in the past, finding out what our next book is going to be. Hello friends. You may have not seen me around Tom's house, where I'm going to be for the rest <laughs> of this video probably. But um, I knew, I know, I've just from the halfway check-in for Pages & Co, to be completely honest with you. And I know it's only a five star. So whilst, I think I'm going to bring some of these with me around Tom's, but um, whilst we have all the books with us, why don't we unwrap the next one? <laughs> right, what am I feeling? This. I can't. I can't make this decision, please. I can't make this decision. This one? I don't know, guys. This is really hard. I like touch them and I'm like, do I like how you feel? Um, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna go. No, I'm not. <laughs> this is horrible. One of these two. I'm gonna go for the chunkier one. Okay, let's unwrap it. Let's unwrap it and see what it is. I'm not looking. Can you see what it is yet? Oh, okay. Interesting. We've got another non-fiction. This vlog is a lot of non-fiction. Well, probably because there's probably quite a lot of non-fiction left. We've got The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. This is one I think could be a five star. I mean, I said that about not that bad and it wasn't a five star. But this one is about the women in the First World War who painted stuff with radium and it led to, led to like crippling illnesses. And it's one a lot of you have told me you think I'm going to enjoy. It's non-fiction about women. This is a positive one. This is, I'm really... 
this could be it. This could be it. <laughs> I'm gonna say it now. I think I could really, really love this and find it absolutely, you know, it's got unpublished diaries, letters and interviews. I think I could absolutely adore this and I've heard it's done very well. So this is a promising one, guys. I think this could be a five star. And you know, when I opened Page and Co, I knew we won't get a five star, <laughs> but this could be a five star. Exciting. <gasps> so exciting. <laughs> Okay, I have high, high, high hopes. I have high hopes for this one. Let's let's hope that it does it. So yeah, we are gonna be reading The Radium Girls, which I really think could be a five star. I'm gonna make a start on it now. We're about to, this evening, pop out to our local theme park that we have annual passes for. We're getting really good value out of it this summer. So we're going there this evening, but we've got like an hour, I think, till we're leaving. So I'm gonna make a start on it. I have the audio book for this as well, which I think could be helpful. Um, so I'm gonna start the audio book and see what I think, but I think this could be a five star. Women, history, so many people have told me that I'm gonna love this and give it five stars. So I can't wait to dive in. And again, one of the oldest books on my TV, you know, it's gonna be so good once I've read all of the oldest books on my TBR. Like I would like to read all these books. Like how, how amazing would that be? I'd love for, to not own any books that I've owned before 2021. You know, because a lot of these are like 2019, 2020 into 2021, these oldest books. So I'd love to get all of the oldest, oldest ones done. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go ahead and start this and I'll probably check in with you once I'm halfway through, but I'm feeling hopeful at the moment that it could be a five star. Good morning, friends. I am not feeling very well today. <laughs> I feel like out of breath just from standing up. I feel just very lethargic. So all I've really been doing today is reading The Radium Girls by Kate Moore and I am about halfway through. It looks like I'm less than halfway through but like loads at the end is like notes and I can't even speak. What is wrong with me? I know what's wrong with me. TMI, I'm about to start my period and I'm feeling rough. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay, we can get through this. Everyone. <laughs> I feel ill. I've got to sleep all night. <laughs> Yeah, there's loads of like notes and like bibliography and stuff at the end. Anyways, I'm halfway through. It's very, very interesting and very well written. So essentially all you need to know about this is about the radium girls who were the girls and women who painted the clock faces of watches and clocks with radium to make them glow in the dark. And they were told to lick the brushes with the radium on to like get it to a precise point. You know when you lick a paintbrush to make it get to a precise point. Little did they know the effects of radium and they were ingesting it all and it went on to kill many of them and give them like catastrophic bodily injuries and, and consequences for years and years on in the future. And it's about that and about, you know, the company trying to hush it up and what have you. And it's so well researched and so interesting. And, you know, it is one of those non-fiction books that you can tell has been really meticulously researched and she's blending diaries and letters and quotes from all these girls and women into the narrative, into the explanation so well. Like, I feel like that's, a, it's a really good sign of a well-written non-fiction where, you know, she could just publish one of their letters in full, but rather it's kind of like piecing it together. I will say, the one negative is there's a lot of people, I mean, this is like a true story, but like there's so many, people who have been affected by this. And the way the narrative is written, you're flipping back and forth between like 10 women and their stories and what happened to them. And I feel like I've gotten a good grasp on it now, but at the beginning when we were meeting them and there's two like plants as well as one in New Jersey and one in Ottawa. The New Jersey one is the main one we're following, but like at the beginning, those first, I don't know, a hundred pages, you were getting introduced to so many people and all the people and the men who work on the boards and the doctors and like, there's just so many names being bombarded at you. Like there is a list of key characters that's like three pages long at the beginning, but I feel like that doesn't really help you because in the narrative, you're still just trying to keep track of who everyone is. So that is, you know, that is like the negative, but it's incredibly interesting. You know, it's a, it's a time in history that I think is incredibly interesting. The only thing is, I don't know if it's gonna be a five star. <laughs> okay. I give it anxious. Clap if you have anxiety. <laughs> the one thing I don't like about doing these videos is I do get so like anxious over whether things are gonna be five stars or not. And like when I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, I just wanna be five stars. I don't think this is gonna, be. well, it could be actually. The first one page is like, oh, so I don't think it's gonna be. But now I'm feeling like it, it could be. It's not out of the realm of possibility. I feel like how it all comes together and how, you know, the information is 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 portrayed to us. And the more also that we get to know these women, 
you know, some of them, the ones that I'm following at the moment are ones that have like passed away, spoiler alert, very quickly. And I feel like we're gonna follow some longer narratives now, which is gonna be interesting. But yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm glad to be finally reading it. This is actually on my 24 books read in 2024 TBR. I did not know that. <laughs> Turns out it's on there as well. So at least I'm taking something off there, reading a nonfiction. Like this, 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 Reading this fulfills a lot of things and I'm really enjoying it. But all I can really say to you is it's a very accomplished nonfiction, really well researched, really well written. Um, but yeah, is it gonna be a five star? It makes me anxious. Anyway, I'll see you later and hopefully I'm feeling a bit better and I finish this and I can talk to you better about it. <laughs> okay, I feel I need to set the scene a little bit. I filmed that last clip with you guys. <laughs> I feel like from the time stamp, you can maybe believe, maybe, 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 maybe believe, you can um, maybe see where this is going. <laughs> but for the last clip, I gave up on this being a five star. I said, I'm just going to enjoy the reading experience. I gave up on the pressure of thinking, is this a five star? Is it 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 a five star? You know, I gave up on that. I gave up on the worry. And I settled into bed last night and I read a really good chunk of the second half of this. And it just got me. It just got me. It just, I, I got it. I got the book, I, I was in it. I was completely enraptured by it. And then I finished it off today. It's made me cry multiple times and it's a five star. It's <laughs> a five star I don't feel right giving us anything less than a five star I absolutely adored this and like I feel like non-fiction particularly a narrative non-fiction is a little bit different to a fiction book where like I feel like in the first half you can tell whether it's gonna be a five star or not because really the payoff of this is how it tells their story and how it all comes together you know I think I maybe didn't have as an enamoured a reaction with particularly those first, first 100 pages because you are meeting so many people. You are meeting all these girls. You're meeting girls and you're not sure which ones like are going to become the key players in the story. You're not sure which names and which details to kind of hold on to. You're just being bombarded with, like this girl and this girl and this girl and this girl. And some of them we don't really hear about again. Some of them we hear a lot about again. But when it got onto like a more straightforward narrative on the second half of them fighting for justice, I just thought it was beautiful. It really reminds me of The Five by Hallie Rubenhold, which is the story of Jack the Ripper's victims. In, you know, A, it's historical, and B, it's telling the story of these women's lives. Like, what people know about the dial painters, the radium girls, is probably just, oh, they painted with the clocks and it killed them, or it disfigured them for life, etc., etc. But they don't know the humanity of their stories. They don't know who these women are. They don't know how their families were connected. They don't know the childhood sweethearts who lost each other. They don't know, you know, there's so much like beauty to hearing their stories and having them remembered. And like, it got me, <laughs> it got me in the same laugh. I just loved it. What is poking me about? Oh, it's Yampa. Don't look at Yampa. The camera, I'm telling the camera not to look at Yampa because sometimes it just auto focuses on Yampa because it's more interesting than me. <laughs> yeah, I, I just adored this. I adored it, I adored it. And I would really recommend it. I don't know if I'd recommend the audiobook. The author narrates the audiobook and she has like, I think what I have, <laughs> which is a bit of an issue with the S's, where like her S's are very intense and on the audio they're just a bit like, they're like, <laughs> like the S's are very intense. So I don't know, and especially when it's sped up, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, anyways, but um, I just, I, I, I loved it. And you know, I was really astounded by, of course, these women's lives are incredibly important, but the way that their husbands stuck by them and advocated for them when so often we see women abandoned by their husbands when they get ill, you know, like there's those statistics about like if a woman gets cancer, how, how the di divorce rate skyrockets. And it, I just really, you know, enjoyed seeing the love that a lot of these couples, I mean, there were some more complex, you know, complicated um, relationships and circumstances in this, but there was just particularly one, this one couple that a lot of the ending of the book focuses on, um, this one case, Catherine and her husband, Tom, and just their relationship, I'm gonna cry, and his love for her, and his, and the way he advocated for her and stood in her place when she wasn't able to, I just thought was really beautiful, and, you know, surprising almost to see in this time um, them them staying by these women when, you know, they're dying age 26, 28 and 
um, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, not getting remarried after and, and just standing, uh, you know, I just thought it was beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. I thought hearing these women's stories are so important. Hearing from them, hearing from them, you know, hearing from letters that they wrote and things that they said is so important. And I, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I can't believe it's been writing on my TBR for so long. But, you know, this, not only this was like a wrapped up retro book, this was on my 24 book stream in 2024. So that's a great thing to tick off. But, but yeah, I, I would really recommend this to people if you're interested in historical women non-fiction like I am. Women. But anyways, that brings up to an end of I can't stop reading until I find a five star wrapped up retro edition. I'm I'm glad that we didn't have to, I mean, I'd fully accepted reading more books. Like I'd really accepted that I wasn't gonna give this five stars, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many other five stars there would be this like. I think I'm gonna do a Patreon exclusive video of just unwrapping the rest of the books and like talking through which ones I think could have been a five star at some point. So I think that'll be interesting. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of any of the books written in this vlog. I mean, we had a 4.5 and a 5 in this vlog, which is pretty amazing, and read two nonfiction, and we read some more old books from my TBR. So I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. And yeah, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!